You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. do is play video games on your computer hey i'm in between assignments when i got something to do i'll do it yeah well your next assignment is probably going to somebody else if you spent more time looking at your calendar than that stupid game you know you're missing the editor's briefing <sighs> fine thank you i guess I know politicians. Politicians never point fingers at voters. If anything goes wrong, it's either their opponent's fault or sunspots. Do me a favor. Find another source to support it. Sorry I'm late, Tom. Ugh, Alex. You're always late. Get a plane ticket to San Francisco and rent a car. There's a research lab about three hours up the coast. Something right up your alley. Nanotechnology. Yeah, if it's too small to see, it must be Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Maybe folks can find some new nano humor before I get back. Speaking of which, why am I going to Northern California? There's a guy named Thompson, a researcher, has a PhD in inorganic chemistry. Rumor has it he's found a way to use microscopic robots to clean up oil spills. If it's true, any company with the technology will make billions. Never heard of him. No one has. That's our job. You do know that. That's not my point. I mean, joke all you want about nanotech, but I know more about it than anyone in this building. This guy's off the radar. Yeah, and it gets better. It's starting to look like his venture capital is coming from a consortium of Middle Eastern banks. That means there's big oil money behind this guy, and it's possible he may have really pulled this off. That explains the secrecy. Big oil doesn't like publicity. I didn't say this would be easy. He works out of a private lab off Highway 1. He's right on the ocean. Oh, sweet deal. Look, I don't care what you do in your spare time, but find out something about this guy and what he's up to. I don't suppose knocking on the door and saying, hi, I'm a reporter, what are you up to is going to work? <laughs> mm, no, no, no. Your usual investigative reporting approach is probably not going to work. That's why we got you hired to work as a graduate assistant on his project. I'm doing what? His lab is crawling with graduate students. We created a fake resume for you and got you hired. You start in three days, so you better get packed. How long am I supposed to work there? Till you have the story. Now, get out of here. What if he asked me to do something scientific? How do I fake that? He won't. He treats his assistants like dirt. I should feel right at home. He won't ask you anything, and he sure won't tell you anything. You're gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. Now, go catch a plane. Why didn't I stick with restaurant reviews? Meet Alex Harrington, a hack reporter with little talent whose career is defined by things as small as his ability. He's a man in search of the big story, and he's about to find it under the microscope that always shows the truth. A truth that can only be found between a shoreline of dreams and that deep blue ocean of fate known as the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone, and our story, The Nanobots, starring David Pasquese, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. That's good enough for now. Alex, can you shut off the agitation? Yeah, right. Uh, it's this switch, isn't it? Yes. Sorry. What, uh, what's in there today? A blend of motor oil, axle grease, and kerosene. Ah, the sludge du jour. Very funny. 
Tim, ready for release? All ready. Okay, let him go. Commence release now. Why do they make that sound? We don't know. They just do. It usually starts after they start eating. And what exactly are they eating? We're not real sure, but if it's got petroleum in it, they eat it. No one seems to know much about anything around here. You're right, Alex. And for the record, you seem to be the most clueless man in the building. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna take a little break. Beautiful view, isn't it? Oh, sorry, I uh, didn't see you coming. Yeah, I could stare at the ocean for hours. Uh, excuse me, can I bum a smoke off of you? You smoke? I wouldn't have expected that. I thought all of you environmentalists were against things like cigarettes. Yeah, well, don't tell anybody. <coughs> I thought so. You're not really a smoker, are you? I guess not. I just, um, I just wanted to talk to you. Hey, you don't have to start smoking to talk to me. You don't seem to be real happy here at the lab? Hey, with the exception of this little balcony where I can steal the smoke, well, there's not a lot going on around here. I like it up here, too. You know, this used to be a naval observatory. It was built in the 30s. Oceanographers used to come up here and study wave action, riptides, and current. And now it's the designated smoking area. Actually, smoking isn't allowed anywhere on the property. Ha! Welcome to California. <clears throat> Some of the other grad students are wondering if you're going to stay on. I mean, you really seem dissatisfied about things. Yeah, well, after four weeks, I was hoping I would have made a little progress. Uh, sorry about messing up those statistics. It's never really been a strong suit for me. That's okay. <clears throat> How long have you been working with Dr. Thompson? About a year now. Every graduate student wants to work with him. It's a chance to make a difference. Is that why you came to work for him? Yeah, something like that. Let me ask you something. Does he ever tell anyone anything about what's going on? Eventually. I mean, eventually he's had to tell all of us a little bit about what he wants to do, and we've been able to understand pretty well the incredible potential for his technology. All we knew coming in was that he was working on a revolutionary new way to save the environment. And that was good enough for you to sign on? Hey, graduate students rarely get any information about their assistantships. Did they tell you something more? No, I guess not. In fact, I know less than you do. Can you fill me in? Look, I'll tell you everything I know on one condition. I'm listening. Well, it's why I wanted to talk to you. Do you want to join us? Hey, in case you haven't noticed, I joined you a month ago. That's not what I mean. There's a group of us. We know what's going on here, and we've decided to take action. So you want to blow the lid off this operation? What are you talking about? All right, maybe I should slow down. What kind of action are you looking for? Okay. <coughs> maybe you should lose the cigarette. Uh, right. Um, I'll, I'll just hold it. Look. Dr. Thompson's a specialist in something called nanotechnology. It's small, microscopic robots that perform certain functions on a molecular level. Believe me, I'm familiar with it. Sorry, of course. That's why we're all here. Anyway, he successfully developed microscopic robots that will consume oil in the ocean from oil spills. That much I figured out. You got any idea how they work? Yeah, I've seen them in action. They look like tiny metal spiders with a tube that extends from the center of their body. Creepy in an elegant sort of way. They're powered by the hydrogen and oxygen in water, and they attack petroleum-based materials and transform them into inert, harmless carbon dust. Then they feed on the carbon to reproduce themselves. Every nanobot reproduces itself by a factor of two, and then... Those two move on to repeat the process. Yikes, that means they reproduce exponentially. Yeah, toss a handful of them on an oil spill and in no time there are billions of them cleaning it up. So what action exactly are you and your group going to take? Dr. Thompson keeps delaying the project. Instead of applying for federal approval and implementation, he wants to shorten the lifetime of the bots. He wants to limit their functionality to a few hours but he won't tell us why. So he's trying to dumb them down. 
Doesn't sound all that profitable. Actually, it's quite the opposite. He keeps saying it's not about profit, but we've figured it out. He's backed by some shady characters. We've seen them at the lab a few times. We think they're connected to oil companies, and it's all about the money. Who exactly is we? I can't say, other than it's a small group of us. We've been working together for a while, and we don't like what we see. So you sit around, have a few beers, and diss the doc? That could affect your grade. It's not about graduate school anymore. It's about justice. It's about the crime of big business. They make money polluting the oceans, and now they're going to make money cleaning it up. Typical big business, big government, big corporations. If Dr. Thompson can make the bots only last a few hours, they could corner the market and maintain exclusive access to the technology and total control. But if the nanobots were allowed to reproduce without limit, well, then it would be a sustainable resource that no one could really own or control. Well, you know, there is something to be said for return on investment. It's not like all this equipment, buildings, and staff are free. This isn't about money. This is about saving the oceans. I don't know how to tell you this, kid, but there's a lot more wrong with this planet than just oil spills. Yeah, but this is not just about oil spills. His nanobots don't just consume petroleum, but petroleum byproducts. What did you just do? I flicked my cigarette off the cliff. Hey, don't worry about a fire. That's the ocean down there. That's just the point. That's the ocean. You're no different than the rest of them. Do you realize the importance of that current down there? A current that comes down from the Sea of Japan, it circles the entire Pacific Ocean, and it's formed an eddy between Hawaii and the west coast of North America. You get worked up pretty easy, don't you? Hey, calm down. It's just a cigarette butt, and that's a big ocean. A big ocean with a big current that's going to take the petroleum-based fiber in your cigarette filter to a large and growing continent of garbage at the center of that eddy in the Pacific. You know, I heard about that. A magazine did a piece on it. Miles and miles wide and 300 meters deep, an island of garbage. A floating raft of plastic bottles, old fishing nets, thick slicks of oil, and probably more than a few of your cigarette butts. So one more is not going to hurt, right? No. In fact, look, I'll flick the cigarette out there too. That's not going to hurt either. Not today, not anymore, not after what's going to happen in the next few hours. Why is it I don't like the sound of that? You will. In fact, it'll make you wish you had joined us. What exactly did you want me to join? Right now, there's a group headed for that garbage continent. They took the lab's research boat in the middle of the night, and they're less than half a day away from Garbage Island, just a few hours away from a new world, a clean ocean, and a solution that won't be controlled by robber barons and oil men. What did you do? The nanobots are about to have their first meal. Don't get too close. If we get tangled up in some of those old fishing nets, we'll never get out of here. Sure we will. Once the bots get to work, this raft of plastic trash will be gone. Look at the size of this thing. You can't even see the other side of it. How should we do this? Well, we've got the nanobots in these three test tubes, and if we throw them out on the plastic, the tubes will break and the bots will get to work. But what if the test tubes don't break? I mean, that's a big raft of plastic out there. It's not like we're throwing these things on rocks. Yeah, I didn't think of that. All right, you know what? Open the tubes, and they'll spill out when they land. Let's do this. Okay, you ready? Yeah. All right, on three. One... Two, three! Oh, one of them broke for sure. It doesn't even matter. All you need is one of those things to hit the water and find some plastic and it'll start duplicating. Is anything happening? I don't think it's working. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do you hear what I hear? Yeah! Go, bugs, go! Look! There's a hole starting to grow right where I threw my test tube. Yeah, there's another one over there. The plastic's just dissolving away. Hey, guys, let's crank up the engines and get out of here. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, Mr. Harrington, you've decided to leave the lab. It's not going to look good on your resume, you know? You know, Dr. Thompson, this is going to do more for my resume than you could imagine. You see, I'm not a graduate student. That comes as no surprise. I always thought you were a little old for this position. Besides, your performance here has been miserable. So, what are you? A government mole? Someone from the Pentagon sent to spy on my progress? Actually... I'm a reporter. A reporter? How quaint. I'll have you arrested. You falsified your application. You faked your credentials. You signed a security agreement. You lied and you just admitted it. You don't know who you're dealing with here. If the answer is big oil in your group of Middle Eastern venture capitalists, I'm all over it. Sir, you are a moron. You have no idea what's happening here. That makes both of us. You see... There's something you should know. Something I found out about your lab and the activities of some of your graduate students. Doc, what you're doing here is quite dangerous, if not reckless. What I'm doing here is strictly controlled. And it's nothing more than developing microscopic, mindless little machines. Machines with a voracious appetite for petroleum-based products. A thimbleful of my nanobots could have cleaned up the oil spill from the Exxon Valdez in a matter of hours. What I'm doing here will protect us from danger, not create it. So what's the catch? I mean, if this is such a miracle invention, how come you're trying so hard to shorten their life cycle? Would that level of control make them more profitable for you and your investors, Herr Doctor? Mr. Harrington, before I have you arrested, I'll let you in on a little secret. Control of these nanobots is not about financial gain. It's about responsibility and the danger this kind of technology could represent. It's the indiscriminate nature of the little beasts. They'll do a great job on an oil slick, but once that's gone, they could turn their attention elsewhere, such as the fuel tanks of a ship. Wait a minute, they can't tell the difference? How could they? They're microscopic, oil-eating insect machines. You want them to have a brain as well? Maybe in 30 to 50 years, but we're just beginning here. I think you've got a problem, Doc. Oh, I know. But in a few years, I think we'll be able to shorten the life of the bots so they only live for a few hours. That way, we clear the area and cut them loose. When they finish the job, they die. The control will be built in. Control that everyone can manage. That's what this is all about. The nanobots you developed and are testing right now, how long does this current batch live? Potentially forever. That's my biggest problem right now. I wouldn't be so sure. Do, uh, do your graduate students know about this? Some do, some don't. I only tell them what they need to know. You see, Mr. Harrington, this is a Pentagon project. This is about national security, not big oil. My assistants only know what they need to know. Anything beyond that is top secret. And you are about to be placed under arrest. Well, secret or no, I want some answers. Of which you will get none. Now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Harrington, I'm going to call security. Okay, you do that. But there's one question you're going to have to answer whether you like it or not. And the question is? If I told you some of your graduate students are on a boat and about to release your oil-eating nanobots into the Pacific Ocean, what would your response be?
floating island of garbage is drifting. That's where Tim said they were going. The Navy has dispatched a destroyer. I'm afraid they may blow the boat out of the water unless we reach them first. What exactly do you plan to do? Tell them the truth. Tell them what they don't understand or appreciate. And if they don't listen to you? It's our only hope. If the boat is blown up, the nanobots will not be affected. The Navy won't listen. This is our only chance to stop them. that thousands of distress calls have been received across the Pacific Rim in the last 48 hours. According to the Department of Homeland Security, the alert status in the United States is code red as a combined Navy, Coast Guard, and international effort has been assembled to deal with the crisis. Latest reports indicate that numerous ships, yachts, and pleasure craft have sunk unexpectedly and abruptly along the entire Pacific coastline. All watercraft are being ordered to stay in port with the exception of naval vessels involved in the search and rescue efforts. Stay tuned for further reports. So that's the official story? No explanation, no information, just don't go in the water? What do you want us to tell people? Isn't there enough panic for you media types to roll around in? Media types? We're the bad guys? I think you're the one who's got some explaining to do, sir. I have nothing to explain to you. Well, maybe not me, but it looks like you got a small army of graduate students looking for some answers. Is it true? What Tim told us? Is it true? Tim, is he here? Where is he? He's gone. He stole a boat from the marina. He's going out to find his friends. Before he left, he told us what they did. Is that what the news reports are all about? Is that why the lab is surrounded by military police? Military police have surrounded the lab? What's going on here? No one can leave this facility. There are additional researchers en route. We're all going back to work. Work without sleep until we can find a way to stop the nanobots. Until then, we're locked down. You're not including me in this little party, are you? Especially you. 
will accomplish nothing with the additional chaos you'll create. What about Tim? He took off in a fiberglass cigarette boat. Ha! Good man. He doesn't smoke, but he found his cigarette. Mary, Tim is dead. The boat he's traveling in will no doubt encounter a great tide of nanobots, and he too will sink into the deep. Justice, if you ask me. He's the ringleader who caused all of these problems. So, on that happy note, I'm going up to your observation deck to have a smoke. Unless you have a problem with that, Dr. Thompson? Smoke yourself to death. The sooner the better. Will do. And as for all of you, Godspeed and good luck. We'll divide into teams. No one works alone. Progress will be reported on an hourly basis. Excuse me, can I bum a smoke off you? Hello, Tim. I heard you were dead. Sounds like Mary did her job. She's one of us, you know. I figured if Thompson thought I was dead, I'd have a better chance. It's one way of looking at it, but a better chance at what? Sounds like you and your friends have done enough. Getting away. Oh, nice. You and your beer-drinking buddies cause thousands of boats to sink, and all you want to do is get away. Yeah, that's saving the earth for you. We didn't know. Thompson told us nothing. We thought the same thing you did, that he was trying to make a world-saving technology. And then we found out it was nothing more than a profit center for the companies and governments destroying the Earth. That may be true, but I gotta tell you, Timmy, there's a big target on your back these days. That's why I'm getting out of here. You staying or coming with me? So you're just gonna run away? Do you know what happened to your friends out there? They're dead, you know. I heard the boat sank. There's more to it than that, Timmy boy. Your nanobots can't seem to tell the difference between a plastic bottle and the plastic hull of a boat. If it means the end of plastic on the planet, who cares? You know, you need to work on that attitude. They knew what they were doing was dangerous. Oh, really? Did you tell them that before they left? Did you tell them they might find themselves in the water a thousand or so miles out in the ocean? Why didn't you save them? Was that their punishment? Punishment? You want to hear about punishment? Listen, you hear that out there? That's the sound of billions of your little bugs out in the ocean. But hey, what are they eating? There's no oil slick, no boats out there, but the sound of them. More and more eating and duplicating. Your friends didn't drown out there, Tim, and we didn't abandon them. We watched. Watched as a gray stain in the water enveloped them. Your tiny little spiders consumed your friends alive right before our eyes until there was nothing left but clear water down to a thousand feet. That's not possible. You left them to die. You talked them into it. You're the guy with the big ideas. You sent them out there and they were eaten alive by your little nanobot friends. I didn't know. I didn't know. Thompson never tells us anything. We tested them in the lab. All they ever consumed was petroleum-based products. They only consumed what you fed them. You had them in sealed glass tanks and tested for what you wanted to see. Too bad you didn't stick your hand in there just once. Things might be a little different now. Things don't sound like they're getting any better. We gotta get out of here. We? Aren't you confusing me with your co-conspirators down there in the lab? You stay if you want, but you're gonna die. Look. What the hell? The nanobots. They're crawling up on land. They're consuming the plant life and the bacteria in the sand on the beaches. Anything organic, anything that's carbon-based, they don't know the difference. Tim, we, we have to get out of here. Let's go. No, we can't go that way. They've invaded the lab. You! You! What are you doing here? Marie! What? Close the hatch. Maybe we can keep those things off the deck. Do you realize what you've all done? Look! They're, they're spreading! Those people! The soldiers! The bots are all over them! They're approaching the foundation of the lab! Thompson, how do we get out of here? Unless you can fly, Mr. Harrington. I'm afraid you have no options. They won't get up here. They can't. Can they? No. The foundation and walls of the building are composed of stone, concrete, and steel. They need carbon and water to spread. So it's over. 
No, Mr. Norrington. I'm afraid it's just beginning. Do you see that creek over there? They're moving upstream. Like the veins and arteries in an organism. Consuming every carbon-based life form in their path across every continent, no doubt. We have to get out of here. We can't stay here. When Mr. Harrington sprouts wings, maybe he'll take you with him. Thompson, what are we supposed to do here? We wait, Mr. Harrington. You see, all humans are carbon-based life forms. It's not petroleum the bots are after. It's the carbon and the oil. That's the trigger. That's what I was trying to solve. But none of you could wait. So now we wait here. Wait until they move on. Or they die. Yes, that's also an option. Of course, given the fact that they have a life expectancy measured in tens of thousands of long years, that would be a very long wait. The planet must be saved, and a small group has found the answer. An answer that has left them all with one simple question to ponder. Will we find solutions to our problems, or create greater problems with our solutions? No one can tell except for a desperate collection of people standing alone in that land of unintended consequences known as the Twilight Zone. The Nanobots, starring David Pasquese with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was written for The Twilight Zone by Steve Newby. Heard in the cast were Christian Stolte, David Darlow, Joby Cerny, Lisa Wolfe, Doug James, Bree Swartz, Steve Newby, and Carl Amari. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group. Sound design, custom Foley effects, recording, and editing are produced in the Cerny American Sound to Picture Theater by sound designers Craig Lee, Bob Benson, Todd Beyer, and Tim Cerny. Music for the Twilight Zone is provided by CBS and American Music Company Incorporated New York. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to download episodes, including three free episodes on our homepage, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking. 